Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Our uh, next topic is uh, pleuro pneumonia. So you can see I have uh, enlisted two um, uh, pleuro pneumonia in two different uh, species. Uh, the first one is a CCPP, that is contagious caprine pleuro pneumonia. Uh, and the second one is contagious bovine pleuro pneumonia. CBPP. So let's uh, discuss uh, these two um, separately. Uh, in this uh, uh, whole uh, lecture, we will be discussing uh, uh, different uh, aspects of these two uh, disease conditions um, in which we, we definitely will have an insight into etiology of this disease. So what are the economic impacts of these two disease conditions, signs and symptoms? And the last, uh, you know, I would be discussing with you the control of this disease, how we will be controlling this disease in animals. So I will be starting with the uh, CBPP, uh, contagious bovine pleuropneumonia. <coughs> So if, if I talk about the CBPP's uh, etiology, it is caused by mycoplasma, mycoids, uh, the subspecies mycoids, which is a gram negative bacteria consisting of cells bounded by plasma membrane. So it's organisms, they differ from other bacteria uh, in that they are deficient in cell walls. So contagious bovine pleuro pneumonia, it is highly contagious and uh, generally accompanied by pleurisy. Um, it's widespread and uh, it causes almost 70% uh, morbidity and almost 50% mortality in animals. And carrier animals in which uh, pulmonary sequestrum, it preserves a potential source of organisms. It can, uh, I mean, have preserve a potential source of these organisms for a period as long as three years. So uh, the root of infection is by inhalation of infective droplets from active or carrier cases of the disease. Both, both can be the, the uh, cause or source of the disease. <clears throat> So here are some risk factors for this uh, condition. Uh, CPB, uh, it causes, uh, uh, there are uh, risk factors at different levels. Uh, some risk factors belong to animals. Some are management related risk factors and some are pathogen related risk factors. So let's start with animal risk factors. Uh, first of all, um, uh, this uh, CBPP and it occurs only in 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 cattle, and uh, uh, rare uh, natural cases have been observed in buffalo, um, uh, yak, bison, reindeer, and antelopes. So, a strong immunity develops after an attack of uh, the natural disease in cattle, and vaccination it plays an important part in control. So this, this was about uh, animal risk factor, which, which species of the animal is mostly uh, is susceptible to this disease. Then are uh, management related risk factors. Uh, the occurrence and incidence of this disease, CBPP is heavily, it's influenced by management systems, uh, disease control policies and regulations of a country and knowledge of the disease by farmers, all these are, are the risk factors management related. And uh, mycoplasma mycoids, uh, subspecies mycoids, it is sensitive to all environmental influences, including disinfectants, uh, heat and drying. Um, and uh, uh, um, so the losses, uh, pathogen-related uh, risk factors, uh, 
uh, we can see that pathogen is sensitive to uh, different treatments like uh, disinfectants, heat, and rime. <clears throat> so these were uh, risk factors. So let's discuss with the, the economic impacts of this disease. First of all, the direct losses are from mortality. Uh, if an animal uh, doesn't die, uh, uh, you can see the losses in the form of reduced milk yield and you have to pay for vaccination costs, disease surveillance, and different research programs. And if we talk about the indirect costs, they are due to the chronic nature of the disease, like loss of weight and working ability, delayed marketing, reduced fertility, losses due to quarantine, and loss of, uh, uh, of cattle uh, trade. Uh, <clears throat> A clinical findings uh, of this disease, uh, for example, in acute cases, the signs include fever, which is up to 41.5 degrees centigrade, loss of appetite, that is anorexia, and painful, difficult breathing, uh, and uh, agalactia and cessation of uh, rumination. So this, the animal will not uh, uh, regurgitate or uh, ruminate. So in hot climates, the animal often stands by itself in the shade. It's head lowered and extended. So it's back slightly arced and its elbows turned out. So auscultation, it reveals pleuritic friction sounds, fluid sounds and moist gurgling crackles in the later stages of effusion. Uh, if we see uh, edematous swellings of the throat and dewlap, it may occur and swelling of the large movable joints may be present. So the animal becomes recumbent uh, and dies after one to three weeks of this uh, disease. <clears throat> and, and, and if I talk about uh, chronic cases, the signs, they continue for three to four weeks after which uh, the lesions gradually resolve and the animals appear to recover. And subclinical cases occur and may be important as carriers. Infected calves may present primarily uh, with the polyarthritis that is seen as swelling of joints and lameness. Um, <clears throat> for the uh, isolation or detection of organisms, you, we normally use uh, PCR or latex agglutination test or ELISA. So sero serology can also be done. Uh, if uh, we talk about the um, treatment of this disease, normally I, I don't discuss the treatment of disease uh, in my lectures, but in this case, tylosine, uh, which is uh, 10 milligram per kg of the body weight is used. Uh, intramuscular uh, and uh, denofloxacin, which is 2.5%, 2.5 milligram per kg per day for three consecutive days. The, uh, these two uh, treatments or antibiotics injections have been uh, found or reported to be effective. Now, how we can control this disease? <clears throat> First of all, uh, CBPP or CCPP, um, these are uh, normally, uh, there are special uh, laws in different uh, countries and there are specific agencies for to whom you have to report uh, the, uh, that the animals are, uh, are infected with this disease. So first of all, because it has been eradicated, so uh, uh, it's reportable in, by law in many countries uh, from which it has been eradicated by slaughter of all infected and exposed animals. So uh, in uh, those areas or uh, territories where cattle movement can readily be restricted, the disease can be eradicated by quarantine blood testing and slaughter. 
so and if we can't re restrict the movement of, uh, of of cattle so the spread of infection it can be limited by immunization with the uh, attenuated vaccine like uh, t1 uh, by uh, 44 strain so that was uh, about uh, contagious bovine pleuro pneumonia if we talk about contagious caproine pleuro pneumonia it's a highly fatal disease that uh, occurs in goats um, uh, if we see the etiology of uh, this uh, type or uh, this uh, um, contagious caprine pleuro pneumonia it is caused by mycoplasma capricolum subspecies capri pneumonia it's uh, both uh, uh, the uh, in both species uh, like bovine in cattle and uh, goats uh, the basic genus of the causal organism is same that is mycoplasma but uh, mycoplasma mycoid subspecies mycoid is, is causing the disease in uh, bovine in cattle and mycoplasma capricolum subspecies capri pneumonia uh, causes it the, the disease in in goats <clears throat> So it's a genus of cell wall less sterile requiring catalase negative bacteria. It's typically non-motile and pleomorphic. It's ranging from spherical, ovoid, pear shape to branched filament forms. So most mycoplasmas, they are facultative anorates, do not stain by the gram methods. So you can't detect it by gram staining. Uh, it has many uh, similarities um, at necropsy level to contagious bovine pleuro pneumonia, but it's not transmi transmissible to cattle. So incubation period for CCPP uh, uh, is uh, six to 10 days and uh, the morbidity rate is 100%, while uh, uh, mortality rate can be 60 to 100% in this case uh, a disease is uh, transmitted readily transmitted by inhalation that is the same in both uh, cattle and goats but the organism it doesn't survive for long outside the animal body uh, that is why the infection is brought into the flock by a carrier or infected animal this is the same in both uh, uh, species Let's talk about the signs, clinical signs of this uh, disease. Weakness, anorexia, cough, hypernia, and uh, nasal discharge, which is accompanied by fever. It's the fever limit uh, or ranges from 40.5 degrees centigrade to 41.5 degrees centigrade. It's often found. Exercise intolerance, it uh, progresses to respiratory distress with open mouth breathing and frothy salivation. So under adverse climatic conditions, the disease may occur in a septicemic form with little clinical or post-mortem evidence of pneumonia. So how we can, I mean, check the diagnose the disease. So we can detect the antigen in lung tissue and pleural fluid by PCR. Serology can be done by especially using ELISA and a latex uh, agglutination test. So the diagnosis uh, techniques are the same for both uh, uh, the species. <clears throat> so treatment is almost same, tylosine only and uh, at the rate of 10 milligram per kg per day for three days and uh, uh, oxy, uh, oxytetracycline can also be used. And recently flu, Nixon, uh, megalumine uh, is being used intravenously uh, after uh, every 24 hours for two to three days um, it, because it may reduce lung inflammation. So this treatment has been advocated to be, uh, I would say effective uh, in this condition. So how we can control this uh, condition? 
first of all, uh, quarantine of affected flocks is it's desirable. Secondly, vaccines are available in some countries and uh, they provide excellent protection against the this disease. Um, especially vaccination with uh, an inactivated uh, uh, like mycoplasma F38 vaccine, it induces an immune response. It has been reported to be effective in reducing morbidity and mortality rates. And a booster dose of, dose of one month after the first vaccination, it provides additional protection. Um, thank you very much for uh, uh, listening to this uh, second part.